Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of History with Hersafat. I am your temporary host, Nick, and today we will be talking about the history of radio leading up to modern day radio and the invention of podcasts, along with some extra fun tidbits as well. The views shared on this podcast come from your average, everyday, ordinary people. Our hope is that it will give a unique perspective on history. For those of you only listening to us via Spotify, Apple, or Google, we also have a YouTube channel showcasing a number of top-notch videos. It's highlighting some borderline funny moments from our podcasts for your viewing pleasure. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to the channel. Your support is greatly appreciated. And joining us today, we have Hersafat, of course, a.k.a. Chris, our typical, usual host. Hi. Christian's back as well. Welcome. Hello. How is everyone doing today? Doing all right. I like that intro. It was very Walter Cronkite. Like, today we have <laughs> the episode for you. <laughs> all right. Take off your well, this is the first time hosting. I'm just trying, I guess I'm trying to find a, uh, oh, yeah. Well, um, I guess we could just start right away, you know, to, but sure um, I was thinking about, you know, kind of taking it back a little bit because I was thinking, just, I don't know, to really like begin talking about podcasts, kind of wanted to get like a better sense of where it all started. So I was thinking about talking about like, you know, radio, kind of a few scientists, you know, that I, uh, that I figured that are most uh, prominent, I guess, uh, when it comes to the radio. So uh, we're going to go back all the way to the late 1800s. So be ready. Okay. Um, there are many scientists throughout history who had a hand in the discovery of radio waves. Hans Christian Orsted was a Danish physicist who discovered through his experiments that an electric current created a magnetic field. He set up a compass with a wire carrying an electric current through a battery to achieve this. An English physicist, Michael Faraday, discovered electromagnetic induction. As time goes on, like always, the science keeps changing, with every discovery unlocking new inventions and utilizing these radio waves to, of course, make what we know today as radio. Guglielmo Marconi, I'm sure you guys know who that is or have heard of him. Oh, yeah. Is the scientist known for discovering radio communication, you know, like through Morse code, uh, landing him a Nobel Prize in 1909 after sending the first transla- transatlantic radio message in 1901. And it's difficult to mention this in good faith without mentioning Nikola Tesla. I mean... You know, when you think about this, you think about Nikola Tesla. You know, like, like, Of course, yes. Who? <laughs> um, I, as, you know, argu- arguably over overshadowed. Um, and uh, what well, we all know about in, him. Uh, uh, prestige. Prestige, yeah. He's pretty good in the prestige. All right. Look a lot like David Bowie. <laughs> yeah, it did look an awful lot like David Bowie. Yeah. It did. It did. All right. <laughs> uh, so we know about him passing like alternating current through the giant coil of wire, the Tesla coils. Mm. Uh, I when I think of Tesla coils, I think of like Red Alert, those weapons uh, yeah, that the Soviets it. had. <laughs> yeah, yeah that stuff was great. <laughs> um, anyway, yeah. these coils they uh, created like a changing magnetic field, and you'd have like so like a bunch of them, right? And then it would create another current to like a nearby coil. And like, and Tesla realized if time just right, he could send strong radio waves, like waves that reached over 30 miles. And that was back in like the 1890s. Uh, But ultimately, uh, Tesla's main interests were in wireless power. He was so far ahead of his time. His ideas for wireless machines uh, seemed ridiculous. And it's just funny to think about that today. Um, Yeah. (laughs) Guillermo Marconi ended up using the discovery for communication. Um, so, as mentioned before, you know, and that was uh, better received, obviously. And not, also goes without mentioning, uh, Tesla wasn't exactly rich either. So there's a lot of money behind Marconi. It sounds Who like was Marconi? Mar- well, Marconi was the guy that got a Nobel Prize. Uh, it was in 1909 for his... Uh, he did a transatlantic communications through Morse code. Oh, okay. I think you already said this. Yeah. 
It sounds like a mobster name. That's what it is. I well, he was Italian, so yeah, funded by the, yeah, the bodies in the <laughs> by the bodies in the transatlantic. Yeah, maybe <laughs> the Titanic. I think wasn't an iceberg that hit him. It was a transatlantic shockwave. Mar- Marconi code. <laughs> Come on. No, wait, wait, no, that's what people mistake in the lyrics. We're getting real deep in conspiracy right now. What's that song? Uh, we built the city on rock and roll. It's oh, yeah, mistaken. fantastic. It's, uh, My Pony Plays the Mamba or something like that. Like people mistake yeah, it. Marconi, for- yeah, Marconi, yeah. Oh, yeah, they thought it was. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's My Pony Plays the Mamba. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but, yeah, Marconi. Definitely a mobster. That's what Definitely it is. a mobster, that's yeah. Definitely. definitely. Okay. <laughs> so on December 23rd of 1900, several, year, several years prior to his first broadcast by radio, Reginald Fazenden, a Canadian scientist, had perfected a new method of sending Morse code more effectively than Guglielmo Marconi. And Reginald Fazenden, he successfully transmitted the sound of a human voice between two 50-foot towers on Cobb Island in Washington, D.C. And on Christmas Eve of 1906, Fizenin made the world's first radio broadcast when he beamed a Christmas concert to the astonished crews of the ships of the United Fruit Company out in the Atlantic Ocean and their Caribbean Sea. So he just like played like a song over the radio? like Yeah, he what he did is he played like the violin. Yeah, he played the violin like a holy night or something. Um, and he read a passage from the Bible. <laughs> yeah. I just got to imagine everyone on that ship's never had this experience. No one on the planet has, I assume. And they're just kind of, you know, it's Christmas Eve. And all of a sudden, shit goes haywire. They're, well, I can't imagine what they were thinking. Can't imagine. Right? Freak the fuck out. Yeah, it's Christmas music. Yeah, he's playing the violin. He's reading something from the... What if it was like Revelations? Oh, could you imagine? <laughs> Like Armageddon is coming, and they're like, "Oh fuck, yeah, oh god, that'd be hilarious." Probably that'd be right. great. Yeah, that's interesting though. It's a hell of a Christmas story. Yeah, right when scurvy <laughs> set in. <laughs> uh, god, that'd be great. All right. Yeah. So, as we all know, of the like 1920s, like boom in the radio, um, like you know, advanced enough for like public consumption. And became like this big source of entertainment. And it's, you know, it's a lot like television today or even our electronic devices. You know, radios were in just about every household. And yeah, so like in the next things that I'm going to talk about, it it makes sense um, on. Okay, well, it'll make more sense after I I tell you about it. But uh, remember that how they're in just about every household. Because in uh, January of 1926, uh, the BBC, being in operation now for about four years in London, held an elaborate fake news broadcast hosted by a Catholic priest named Ronald Knox. The broadcast started in the evening, interrupting a lecture, and the public was immediately informed with what they were about to listen to, that it was fake and for entertainment purposes only. And afterwards, Knox goes on to report in that fake report of a massive riot happening in London, including the destruction of Big Ben and the hanging and burning of hotels. And this sparked a lot of controversy, mainly within the local papers who had headlines with false claims, uh, much like the next thing I'm about to mention, uh, because this can remind us of something, you know, that we're all familiar with. Um, you know, Orson Welles uh, with the H.G. Wells novel, War of the Worlds. Yeah. Well, they, um, yeah. yeah. Um, in October, on, on October 30th, 1938, Orson Welles held a live broadcast that was a script based on an H.G. Wells novel called War of the Worlds. This was all done with a professional theater group with sound effects and, a, and solid voice acting. Everyone remembers this story, spreading chaos throughout the country. However, this is actually untrue. Uh, sure, there have there may have been some panic, but not at all like it was reported during that time. And again, you know, 
just like these false claims that they made in uh, 26 in London. Uh, this was happening as well during this time. Um, yeah, it's pretty pretty wild actually, um, because these these rumors that were reported uh, that became so widespread because the various newspapers such as like the Chicago Herald, the San Francisco Chronicle, and the Boston Daily Globe all reported that the panic, all reported the panic, right? And ultimately it was because the newspapers were in direct competition with the radio when it came to being like a reliable source of news and therefore in competition, uh, in competition to make a profit, right? So like all the advertising, all the advertisements would like switch from papers to radio because more people were picking that up it was more readily available. And so the papers just try to make it seem like the radio couldn't deliver on reliable news and could be a potential danger to the public. Uh, right. Interestingly enough, this incident actually uh, further pushed Orson Welles, who was already a uh, actor director uh, deeper into fame than he already was and uh, went on to make some pretty great movies. Um, um, so yeah, we could stop there and we could talk about some stuff um, in London. You said a Catholic priest decided to get up there and just start, but yeah, Big Ben's on fire. Everything's yeah. chaos. Uh, riots in the streets. People are getting murdered. Theft. The whole thing. It's the end. Uh huh. <laughs> they don't right. tell him. <laughs> I can't wait. Like that. That's madness. That's madness. That's yeah. That, but, I, I, and then it's just Ashton Kutcher, like punked. in the background, <laughs> in the black room. This trucker hat. Uh, uh, <laughs> out back there, it's like, all right, guys, all right, cue, cue the the Big Ben blowing up, cue the Big Ben blowing up. <laughs> oh god! And then Orson Welles just like reminds me for some reason of like Zelensky. Oh right, yeah. Um, yeah, uh, yeah but yeah, but the the guy, the priest, just wanted to. Do like a parody, I guess. I'm not. I'm not really sure if I had to think. If I had to assume any any reason why you would do that is maybe to uh, use it to maybe scare people to come to church or something. I don't know. Oh, maybe I have no idea. Yeah, it, just, it's it does seem back. crazy. It's just that you know, <laughs> you know, rogue priests. I don't know. I don't know what's going on here. Just <laughs> I don't know where you would. Did anybody give him the okay for that? Or did he just I mean, yeah. to, your, to your point, Nick, it was probably a great tithing day. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, right. <laughs> exactly. Oh, uh, man. And the, what, and the Orson Welles one is uh, that one. Everyone knows that one. But I guess it wasn't as bad as people have been made to believe. Right. Um, a lot of the the bad stuff that's still actually spread today actually comes from those newspapers that I mentioned um and because because they wanted to slander the the radio right. make it uh, ob obsolete because they were taking yeah. over their business and they it just found a great opportunity however you know just like actually in 1926 with Ronald Knox that priest um before the broadcast mentioned that it was fake you know Orson Welles did the same thing um they actually required him to do that um sure. yeah. to say it before and during the the whole presentation not to mention um H.G. Wells that novel and other novels uh by H.G. Wells were well known during that time and everyone knew of War of the Worlds it wasn't anything right new or special or anything it was just it was just a different um it was a loosely based script is the version that Orson uh told on October 30th 1938 what so it made was it, it the made it interesting? What was the goal behind that? Like just to have like theater on radio to test yeah. it out, or yeah, pretty much uh, just for sheer entertainment purposes with the with the theater guys that Orson knew there with through his professional career, um, and they just did a really great job. You know, that's really cool because yeah. when when I worked like um, night shift or second shift, I would be driving home at like. 3 a.m. and it would have uh, like actual theater or plays being played on like NPR. I oh, used to nice. love it, dude. And it was probably my favorite thing to listen to at night. That's that sounds neat. nice, man. Really relaxing. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I've always wanted to listen to? I can't remember what it's called exactly, but 
Sideshow Bob sings it to Bart in an episode of The Simpsons. And it's a really funny, like, comedy. Uh, and it's about, like, people and sailors going on, like, the Navy, uh, British Navy, I think. Um, I can't remember the name of the play itself or the musical. I guess it's a musical play. Yeah, but that would be one I'd love to listen to the car. Got to figure out what it's called, but, you know. Mm. It's a, it's time. Right. Hopefully it works. Um, yeah, that's interesting, yeah. though. Yeah. All right, well, uh, let's jump ahead uh, to a little more modern day. Uh, the radio as we know it today is something that would make the scientists mentioned previously left in awe and wonder. For the entitled, more modern folk, it's just not good enough. And to some degree, I also I agree as well. Um, it has ads all day long. Uh, some of the content is unpredictable. If you have a show you listen to, it's locked into a certain time. You could possibly miss that episode. However, with the invention of podcasts, all of that changed. And the first world rejoiced. Possibly all of the world, but don't quote me on that. <laughs> so, in 2004, Adam Curry, you guys heard of Adam Curry? Yeah. Curry? Yeah, Adam Curry developed a coded program known as iPodder and it allowed people to download radio broadcast directly onto their iPods. However, it wasn't until around 2005 that companies decided it would be a smart investment. Steve Jobs took this opportunity in the iTunes 4.9 software update, specifically for iPods, to help support the upcoming trend. In 2006, Steve Jobs hosted an event, and during it, he showed people how to record their own podcasts with GarageBand. You guys remember GarageBand? Uh, I still use it. Just you still it. use it? Man. Yeah. That's crazy. And so, yeah, <laughs> after this, other companies started to take it more seriously. And a wave of them were investing in this new tech opportunity. And Steve Jobs considered podcasts to be the TiVo of radio. Uh, which is a great reference if you know what TiVo is. Yeah. Heck yeah. I love TiVo. TiVo. I had one for a little bit. But then yeah. eventually like, the satellite companies just had their own TiVo like, pre-installed. So you didn't have to really work, even right. need it. It, it came just obsolete. became a thing. Yeah, it came obsolete. Yeah, awesome. TiVo was awesome when it came out. And it would like, uh, there's a, a Patton Oswalt bit, I think, about TiVo, where he's talking mm -hmm. about like the TiVo would make suggestions or think like it would record programs that it would think you would like based on what you have. I remember that. <laughs> uh, but it's just like the, the things that it would choose is like, no TiVo, no bad TiVo. I would never, <laughs> <laughs> I would never watch that. Yeah. Um, oh, TiVo. I, I think it's crazy. Like thinking about the podcast time, like when it first started to be like it, pretty prevalent uh and popular it's like it was right when like i feel like visual media was really exploding and then to me when podcasts started becoming popular it just didn't make sense to me at first right i'm like why do people just want to listen to people talk when we're like we have youtube and e-bombs world you know my space yeah <laughs> social media network you know sites to use um, yeah i think yeah i think with the and being able to look at it on your phone so like when you like i think it was iphone was like the very first like touch screen like full like you can watch a video on it that sort of thing you know i know they had the ipod the video ipod which is pretty expensive it was around that time too but um being able to just carry on the go and like watch a video in your hand wasn't a common thing so um you know when it became common pretty popular that people you know would use it to for all sorts of interests, and one of those end up being a podcast. You wouldn't think, right? How many right. times you go, people are like, well, you know, if only you just like record that conversation that you had. It was really good. It's really right. fun. It be really deep. It would be really hilarious. It can be, you know, so and so just a really good moment, stuff like that. That was always kind of the uh, the genesis behind well, this podcast. I'd say in a way, it was always. <laughs> I always enjoy the conversations I have with friends and people and I'm just, you know, conversationalist in general, but you know, I, it wouldn't be nice if we could like hold on to these memories in a way. So, when, you know, when we're older, we can go back and 
remember when we all had that conversation about psychedelics when we were like 30s, mid 30s? Like, <laughs> oh yeah, 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 we can have that. Or the one we talked about podcasts, or the one where we talked about I don't know, Heaven's Gate. You know, things like that. You now these, for better or worse, <laughs> are on the internet. Are, are, you know, permanent, and we can look back on them if we want to. So yeah, that was yeah. kind of the genesis of the whole idea. And uh, you know, I would think, well, I mean, I know p- people like to hear themselves talk in a sense, and they think that, well, surely everybody's going to want to listen to my friends and I. I always have like a backup plan. Let's have it be about something. <laughs> in a sense of course Let's try i mean we can get up <laughs> and ramble like i'm doing right now but right you gotta have like a theme thing. right yeah theme something just to some sort of foundation to then build upon so sometimes right. definitely but then like i listen to like shane and gillis or uh or i mean whatever shane gillis shane and gillis. uh matt mccluster or whatever his name mm-hmm. is mccuster yeah. and they literally talk about whatever the fuck comes into their mind. And I think the funniest part of their last podcast was them talking about like taking dumps. And uh, (laughs) so it's, yeah, Yeah. there's definitely, but then of course I have like, I have like five different genres of podcasts that I like flip through periodically. It's like the one, like I listen to them when I literally don't want to think about anything or try to be, try to like feed myself any knowledge i'm just like i just want to fucking zone out and And then there's the type that where it's like you know pure philosophy and i'm trying to learn shit you know right i think that guys like shane you know um and like theo you know all these people joe rogan they have a better time with podcasts simply because of their influence or their fame uh, that way they can really don't need a theme to just talk about whatever. Uh, yeah. if, I wish that we could be so um, also so they're lucky. So, they're uh, also professional comedians. Like that's they're, true. They're they up are. there doing the work for. They put putting in the work, yeah. But yeah. I, I'm just I'm just saying that I wish that even if not in that sense, just just wish we could just make a podcast where we just talk about whatever and people yeah. actually listen. So well, maybe we'll, a theme and maybe we'll huh? just. Try once see how it goes right well that is yeah, yeah. Just record and just, just, just say, completely right, re- random no script I just go off the i'm always yeah. going to be the one that argues that you can always do that and sure if it's if it's in the it's like i'm not going to get too philosophical about it but you I'm know going. just just fucking do it you know what i mean like if if the wind is blowing that way and somehow you catch that drift then you're gonna then you're going to float along with it, you know, but um, fuck, there's no negatives out of just bullshitting with your friends on a podcast every whatever day you feel like, you know, you want to do that, you know? I don't think it's a bad idea at all. I think it's uh, definitely be an experiment. Uh, I'd like to try it. I mean, don't get me wrong here. Uh, I, I think we have great conversations that aren't themed. Don't get me wrong. Absolutely. You know, like every time like we hang out or see each other, hold on, let's have something we're going to talk about before we actually talk. We just kind of, you know. All right. Well, I'm going to be starting a podcast my own that's basically just random as fuck. So if you guys want to, you if you want an outlet, come over and we could do it together. All right. I'd be interested in being a guest. Hell yeah. Hell yeah is the name. All right. Do you have a name for it? <laughs> I don't know, man. I've been doing everything like with like music and stuff um, under shaping clouds, which is just kind of like staring up into the sky and watching the clouds go by. And that's kind of where the conversation might go, you know? So, how are you uh, calling them? You call them shaping clouds? What's that? Shaping clouds? Yeah, shaping, like shaping clouds. Like and, either uh, you're shaping it or your friends are shaping it or the sh- clouds are shaping themselves, you know? And uh, do we have a date that the listeners can uh, expect to possibly tune in? Uh, not yet, but uh, I didn't I didn't mean to make this a plug, but... Uh, but plug. That's okay. Yeah, I'll give an update <laughs> I just, soon, I guess. I all right. Shaping clouds. That's all I'm going to say. That's my, nick. That's my name suggestion. Cool. So you can never be misshapen. So that's the whole, eh, the whole thing. But... We can move on. That that's my <laughs> only sense. Cool. Only have, there we go. Cool. 
All right, gentlemen, uh, we'll move on here from, uh, we'll talk about, basically talking about uh, where podcasts, the word podcast came from. Uh, most people know this, but uh, since this is a show, an episode about uh, podcasts, um, there's a guy named Ben Hammersley, he's a, uh, he's a journalist. Ben Hammersley first mentioned the word podcast in an article in The Guardian titled Audible Revolution which was released February 11th, 2004. A year later, Oxford Dictionary lists the word podcast as word of the year. As you couldn't tell already, the term is a combination of iPod and broadcast. So that's pretty cool. I never, <laughs> yeah. I never bothered to even consider where the hell podcast came from. Yeah, right? It's like, called podcast it just it rolls off the tongue so well it does it's, it's like a word that's always been there you know for sure kind of wait can you thing. tell me the words that you just said that that made that podcast word ipod again? ipod and broadcast bullshit i cannot believe apple has sunk their way yep into our psyche as much as they have isn't that crazy <laughs> that's insane yeah Wow. Yeah. But it also makes sense because like I mentioned before at this, the Adam Curry guy, he coded into like iPods yeah. themselves to make. Yeah. 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 That was what this, that was the Steve jobs update that actually used some of his code to you to actually make it part of iPods thing. Like you Which can now actually. Insanely. Huh? That makes it like way more accessible to exactly. millions, millions of people. So they're mm -hmm. kind of like the, the grandfathers in a sense, not I mean, the grand, maybe the dads. Let's say the dad or the third cousins. Of, of fuck, dude, mm -hmm. it's like I, I I don't remember who it was. I just saw like a stand up comedian talking. About, I think it might have been Bill Burr, um, talking about like Steve Jobs, and he's like, "What did he really do? What did oh, he yeah, do?" Oh yeah, I love that bit. He's eating like, <laughs> a, the, he's, he's eating like a pretentious pear, pretentious yeah. pear, like a pear. And like, oh, here's another one. Here's yeah. another one I got. <laughs> that's a perfect boston fucking uh you would think you were the penguin or no that's bruins my bad um you're a maple leafs fan anyway uh yeah, fuck the fucking bruins god <laughs> it's all right we don't have to worry about any other team other than the blackhawks because bedard is in town baby oh well, i'm know. looking forward to seeing that i'm looking forward to october 10th yeah, for that's sure gonna be good but anyway, uh, like I was saying, like Steve Jobs, like, man, yeah, we laugh and we're like, yeah, fuck Steve Jobs in a way sometimes, that fucking turtleneck. But at the same time, <laughs> he really did, like, how much has the world fucking changed because of that shit, you know? For sure. Right? You got to give it to him. And But Bill Burr, I think his uh, point was uh, that it wasn't actually Steve Jobs. It was all the people that created all that stuff. Yeah, of course, mm -hmm. of course. Yeah. So we should be thanking them. But I think they're Absolutely. all in like factory in some third world country. <laughs> right. Yeah, uh, definitely. Jumping out windows. They got trampolines. So yeah. It comes right back up. Um, but yeah, I still think, I mean, Jobs is the visionary. He's been there since what, the late 70s, founded mm -hmm. Apple, got kicked out of Apple, got back into Apple, eventually became like the CEO again. And it's yeah, crazy journey. Yeah, it's pretty wild. Definitely one of the most influential people of what I'd say the last hundred years easily. Mm -hmm. Easily. For sure. Uh, but that's about Definitely. Um, I was going to talk about, basically I'm going to go on and talk about a few things of some podcasts that I really like personally. Um, and you guys might like the ones I'm going to mention as well. But basically I'd like to have that be like an open thing, you know, talk about some podcasts you guys like. Um so, I mean, like when podcasts started to really take off, uh, I know Tom Green was doing his own as well uh, as a personal pick of mine. That's another uh, Joe, visionary. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, Joe Rogan mentions this in episode uh, number 1463. He talks about how Tom had his own servers, his own network. His house was like a set, as Joe called it, talking about wires snaking around the house. Uh, and we have come a long way since then. Uh, everyone's like using Wi-Fi, you know, or I mean, right. you know, direct connection still recommended, but 
still it was uh yeah like you said like he's like a, he's a pioneer in, in that sense he was doing stuff like that you know doing like video calls and stuff and like people yeah. are like what you're doing a video call this is crazy what year was that like 2006 something like that yeah Maybe. yeah That's, around that time i mean when did the ipod come out it had to have been like 2000 it was like 2005 right was it 2005 oh, okay I think it was before the iPhone, I think, right? I mean, the before iPhone I was the 06. IPhone. Yeah, iPhone was 06. Okay, yeah, so those are... That's right, I meant the iPhone. The 06 came, same... Okay, so same year. Uh, well, I oh. also wanted to mention another guy, or another podcast real quick, and then I can let you guys, um, you know, go your go your own ways with this. Um, another great podcast I enjoy is The Ricky Gervais Show. That all started on XFM, which is a London-based radio station. Uh, Ricky Gervais, along with Stephen Merchant and Carl Pilkington, did live broadcasts on XFM starting in August of 2001, and it aired until 2005. I can honestly go on and on about these guys. Uh, they have some of like the funniest bits. Carl might be the funniest man on the planet, all right? Uh <laughs> Um, but they eventually had a podcast that it made to the Guinness Book of World Records for most downloaded podcast in 2006. They had millions of downloads. It was wow. it was pretty wild. Uh, but yeah, so you know, I understand it may be blasphemy to mention other podcasts on the show, but I feel like in this You're contest, sure it's it is forgivable, right? So sure. I would just I want to hear what you guys, uh, what your favorite podcasts are. So um. You know, I'll start with uh, Christian, you know, like uh, any podcast that you listen to. I know you were mentioning you listened to some earlier, but any that you want to give a shout out to, you know, tell us that we might not know of. Yeah, man. I mean, what I was pretty late to the game with podcasts. I, The one that actually got me into it, and it was a while ago, was Joe Rogan kind of in the earlier stages. Um, mm -hmm. Now it's kind of hard to listen to. He gets real seems like he's always trying to he just needs to know everyone's diet um and then right. uh are you eating elk <laughs> right yeah. it's like Jamie yeah I had, a, I had a rough time in 2012 and he's like well what were you eating bro like, <laughs> I calm down joe <laughs> um <laughs> but uh yeah i you know one of the big ones for me was like philosophize this uh, I can't remember the guy's name, but he just he's able to kind of talk about different philosophers, uh, you know, in more layman's term. Um, other than that, it's what was big with me uh, right now is man, I'm all over the place, honestly. But uh, like I said, the the Shane and Matt one is kind of just funny to me. Theo really like opens some different pathways in my mind on how to talk because he just <laughs> he's insane like he just he no one creates sentences the way that guy does yeah he's very entertaining oh yeah um, um him and him and bobby lee are my they need their own show together tiger belly was a big one for me actually All uh right. for a while uh i haven't really listened to the one with him and uh um what's his name the redhead dude Oh yeah, I know who you're talking about. I can't think of his name, but I know who you mean. Yeah, uh, this is going to be a controversial one, but and I kind of go back and forth to it. But it's like Chris D'Elia's podcast. Um, I think that guy's super creative too. I know he got canceled, so I should probably shouldn't bring him up. But I'm trying to remember um, who the hell. Chris D'Elia, the the tall, lanky dude with the he did the drunk girl one, the drunk girl skit and comedy. Hmm. Um. Right. Wait, didn't he get busted with like uh children? No, oh, so he, he was texting a teenage girl that he met at a bar. Oh, I see. So oh, and Christ, then man. and then he claims that uh once he found out she was a teenage girl that he stopped texting her. Um, but who knows? Who fucking knows, honestly? Yeah. I mean I, every pretty much everyone in LA is is a fucking pedophile anyway, probably. So, who cares? I'm not. A not, not who a cares? Off tangent here. Let's uh, edit. Let's yeah. edit out. Who cares? Yeah. Oh, we're gonna. And, uh, that's okay. We can cut all that out. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> who cares? Yeah. 
Uh, so Chris, how's that? Cool do you? What do you yeah. like? You know, what's your? What do you? Um, like? Well, I mean, honestly, I think of, uh, of all the podcasts, I'd say the uh, the Ricky Gervais show. If I had to choose one that was like the biggest inspiration for this, mm-hmm. my decision to do one is that would be it. I mean, those three together are fucking hilarious. Everyone is hilarious, and it's such. It, it doesn't matter what it is. I mean, I listened to. It was like they had an episode on art on world history, mm-hmm. on all sorts of different things. Right. And I found it all incredibly interesting. And I normally would probably give up listening about half an hour in or something like that, or I'd come mm-hmm. back to it. I listened to the entire thing. I used to fall asleep listening to the Ricky Dreyer. Absolutely. I was going to say, it's it's incredibly calming to just listen to these guys talk. It is. Yeah. Uh, and, I mean, coming back from doing extras and then doing the podcast with Carl, mm-hmm. they had a mm-hmm. huge audience already. They'd already done The Office right. and what Office, yeah won lots of awards and they were well known so that helps right. out with all those downloads but that's not to take away from it it is really really good stuff i Absolutely. still think it's still better than most of the podcasts i hear today mm-hmm. honestly um but other than that i mean i like watching like retrospective on sitcoms such as uh, the sunny podcasts i think those guys are hilarious and i love mm-hmm. listening to their insights on the each episode that they go through i think that's right. but i mean really other than that it's uh bits and pieces i watch clips right. podcasts as opposed to the entire podcast hmm. um, i used to watch joe rogan a lot i used to but, but, well i used to watch joe rogan based on the guest and sometimes yeah. i put the guest on i was like oh my god i can't i can't believe this guy's on there and then i'd watch it and then i would you know i'd leave and then sometimes it'd be like oh oh he's on oh i want to hear that and you know the neil degrasse tyson episode where he was explaining about how oh, why it's so like the the force that it hits brings like an asteroid brings up to a point a small needle point so that's why when you see a crater in the ground everything like centers in and the very center of that is the pinpoint of when it hit the earth and that's why it looks like that and it's just wow. chaos it's just it's such a mind-blowing way he just he way more eloquently put on the grass tyson's end than mine but I just, love how your Joe Rogan experience is like Neil deGrasse Tyson. Mine's like Joey Diaz is what got me into it. <laughs> <laughs> Joey Diaz's stories are fucking ridiculous. Like I should sure amazing. Yeah, absolutely. Um, but yeah, it's just like ridiculous. Like what a life. What a life. I mean, that's I mean more can you say than that for Joey Diaz. Right. Uh, right. But uh yeah, not a stuff like and like people that were beyond joe rogan's podcast i just go check them out at some other place too which is kind of the idea there but yeah i'd yeah. say yes, that's pretty much you know for me right now there's not like a one that i'm pretty much this one this is probably my my biggest podcast that i invest the most time in right <laughs> this, so. well, I was before say, i forget oh go ahead go ahead no no i was just gonna say hopefully you know i was gonna you know ask you guys what's your favorite podcast i was gonna say hopefully it's uh history with Ursafat. <laughs> I was waiting for you guys to mention. <laughs> I probably wouldn't have. Uh, <laughs> right. I, I, it's very before, meta. Before we move on, I do want to talk about, not talk about, but just kind of name off four people so I know I got like my favorites in that I've been listening to. Yeah. Um, there's one called The Soundtrack Show. And that's like literally about game soundtracks and movie soundtracks. And the guy goes through like music theory and everything, which I don't understand because I'm an idiot. <laughs> uh, but it's amazing, especially the one about like Zelda Ocarina of Time. Oh, um, I love that game, man. Yeah, dude. And the soundtrack is just incredible. That's actually like it the is. first time I I noticed music in a game was in Ocarina of Time. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah. Say and that then, or- uh, go ahead. I was going to say that or Final Fantasy VII, but they came out around yes. the same Final Fantasy VII too was yeah. that for me, man. Um, and then Yannick Guizdala, who's like a bass jazz bassist, basically, but he's all over the place. He, he's amazing. Duncan Trussell Family Hour, obviously with like Midnight Gospel, that shit was insane. And then uh, Tetragrammaton with Rick Rubin is really good, actually. Oh, Rick Rubin. Okay. All music. All right. Which, yeah, nice, good stuff. Good stuff. I'll have to check that out. For sure. Yeah, definitely. He's he's really good at just like getting into like the deeper purpose of people. And actually he has one with uh with uh what's his name from Nine Inch Nails? Um Trent Reznor. 
Trent Reznor. Um, and it just, he gets really like deep into the, like immediately almost too into like the inse- insecurities that uh, Reznor has. It's really good. So, yeah, that's good stuff. Right on. Well, um, everyone these days has a podcast. That's for sure. Yeah. Uh, because audio is rather inexpensive and we can put all the created content on sites that even the big wigs are using. Uh, to create an audience is very difficult, but incredibly rewarding. Having an original idea is important as well as audio quality. <laughs> That's a huge one, right? I mean, audio problems are always an issue. Persistent. Um, oh, yeah, very much so. And a live show would be great to do one day, uh, even just like a recorded live show. However, those episodes are a little bit more expensive, take more time planning, but we could get there one day, maybe do one ep- an episode like that, like a special one. Who knows? Who knows? Yeah. Um, special. I don't want to leave any, right? I don't want to leave any false hope, <laughs> but yeah. Just say, uh, it's coming soon. Right, yeah. <laughs> stay, <laughs> stay tuned. Um you know, podcasts have come such a long way since their inception. The technology itself is still ever changing. Uh, there's always new ways to do your podcast. You know, new new programs. Uh, the discovery of radio waves changed history and ultimately brought the world together through near instant communication. And today, you can save, record, pick, choose. It's a radio show buffet at your fingertips, and it all started with an idea. Who knew that even in the 21st century, 2023, radio as a form of entertainment is still as popular as ever? And uh, that is all we have for today. Unless you guys have some things to share, we can close out. Oh, uh, Christian, any ideas? Anything to share on? Oh, no, I just have this one lingering idea, which is that, or thought, that mm-hmm. it's it's really crazy to think about like a, um like a greek uh western world where you know you had people in like these open temples with pillars and shit just like laying down in robes drinking wine talking to each other all day and somehow we've come back to like we feel like it's this technology but it is just another form of us just like I'm laying down in bed right now, just talking to you guys about right. ideas and thoughts. Um, it's kind of crazy that we've come this far of uh, being so far from each other and yet still doing the same exact thing. And probably we're not, I mean, I know I'm not nearly as smart as fucking Socrates. So it's kind of funny that this is even something that's happening in time. Right. Right. Now. Yeah. I mean, that is incredibly insightful. I, I like that. That's good. Yeah. Very good. Uh, so, what oh. are you wearing? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, guys, it's been fun. Um, and with that, we uh, hope you enjoyed listening to our conversation and will join us again for another installment of History with Hersafat. This episode was brought to you by Water and Exercise. Stay hydrated and healthy with Water and Exercise. Water found at your nearest tap, exercise done separately. Also, please don't forget to subscribe to the podcast. All of these things are essential for your health and well-being. Take care of yourselves and each other.